I never liked politics as a child. I saw it closely. Issues like 370, issues like CA, Congress leaders said the same thing that BJP leaders are saying today. Which Muslim has lost his or her citizenship in four years in India? Not one. Show me one. Two thousand twenty-four has been a pretty transformative for you, seeing that you had to end a fifty-five-year-old relationship with Congress. Now, your father, Mr. Dera, was a blue-blooded congressman. Your mother, Hema Dera, was one of the closest friends of uh, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, and you had to break off this relationship. Wasn't it very emotional for you? You know, Congress now is my past and I have moved on so that I can serve Mumbai better, so that I can serve Maharashtra better, so that I can serve India better. Certainly my family has had relations with the Gandhi family um, and I have no ill will towards that family. I wish that family all the very best. But you have to ask what is your higher purpose and my loyalty, my uh, ultimate deeper relationship is with the people of Mumbai, it's with the people of India. And when you reach a stage in a particular organization where you feel that you're unable to perform, you're unable to deliver, you're unable to achieve that higher purpose, then it's time to make a move. So I stayed with the party during its most challenging decade from 2014 to 2024. I did my level best to guide the party towards what I thought was the path to victory, towards a path to being able to perform for the country, to being a party which would move from 40 to 50 seats to back to about 100, 200 seats, could come to power. I felt that the party has moved in a direction where um, I don't think it valued the comments and suggestions I had to offer. And after a point, as I said, that becomes difficult to, uh, it, it, it becomes suffocating in a way and you hit a glass ceiling where you are unable to move beyond that. So that's why I had to take a very, very difficult decision. At the same time, I was also fortunate to uh, meet a leadership and meet up, uh, you know, a, join a party where the leader, the Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Mr. Shinde, wanted someone like me. He felt that the, the things that I brought to the table, the talent I had, the experience I had, would be very valuable. So when you reach a stage where a certain organization is saying your talent, your skill set, your experience doesn't count and someone else is saying that matters, in fact that's exactly what we want, then naturally somebody has to take a decision so that they can achieve their higher purpose. Um, so as I said, I wish the family, the Gandhi family my very best. I have not said anything negative about them. I will not do that in the future. Um, my politics has always been constructive, it's always been development oriented and I will continue to pursue that path. Just like you, uh, many Congress loyalists have, you know, left the party recently for other options. Um, and it was being said that party's top leadership is really not in sync with its people, with its main people. What do you have to say about it? See, again, I don't want to go into analyzing or psychoanalyzing the Congress party. I've taken a decision to move on and I wish the party my best. The party has certain problems that's obviously reflected in its electoral prospects. Um, and um, the only thing I would say to you is that uh, for the sake of India, India regardless of which party comes to power in the next few months, the country also needs a credible, constructive, strong opposition to keep the government of the day in check. And I've always hoped that at the very least, if Congress cannot come to power, can it at least aspire to provide a India with a constructive opposition? I certainly believe that India has not had a strong opposition in the last 10 years. And um, I think that even the government would want a strong opposition. Um, a strong opposition is an integral part of democracy. To expect that the government will uphold democratic values and work towards strengthening democracy with a weak opposition, uh, with a divided opposition, with a fragmented opposition, it doesn't work. Moving on to your fresh start, which is the Eknath Shinde, Shiv Sena. Many people have questioned that uh, what did actually lead you to join 
Eknath Shinde's Shiv Sena while most of your contemporaries were joining the BJP. I saw in um, in Eknath Shinde ji who's been the chief minister of Maharashtra for 2 years um a man who despite coming from very very humble beginnings has a very grand vision for Mumbai and for Maharashtra. I heard stories about the way he works and I can tell you that I've seen it in the last 2 and a half to 3 months. I was in Davos in Switzerland when he was there to attract investments to the state. I've seen his work ethic in the last few months. I'm personally witnessing a transformation in Mumbai whether it's with infrastructure where you're seeing projects being executed at a record pace whether it's public transportation like the metro whether it's transportation for motorists the atal setu which connects mumbai to uh, the the to to uran and the hinterland whether it's the coastal road those things to me are refreshing and um i like a person who has a who works with a sense of a mission i like the ability to be able to govern to be able to get something done uh, to be able to transform and change somebody's life for the better and he's given me that opportunity so that's why i chose to join him how do you see yourself in eknath shinde's shiv sena uh, you know fulfilling your purpose in fact fulfilling your higher purpose well look the party has already sent me in a very short period of time to the to parliament i'm already now a member of um, the rajya sabha the upper house i'm not sure what will happen in the months ahead whether the party would want me to contest the elections the lok sabha elections um but as a member of parliament whether it's in the lok sabha or the rajya sabha um certainly representing mumbai in delhi i think mumbai for the last several years uh, in some ways we have good voices in delhi but we need stronger voices and we need more voices in delhi um and mumbai is such a diverse city and it has so much to offer it has so many strengths mumbai ek prakar se hum keh sakte hain ki desh ki arthik rajdhani hai देश की सांस्कृतिक राजधानी है यहाँ बॉलीवुड हेड क्वार्टर है यहाँ क्रिएटिव सर्विसेज इंडस्ट्रीज हेड क्वार्टर है आपकी पूरी कंटेंट क्रिएटर्स एडवर्टाइजिंग इंडस्ट्री यहाँ मुंबई में रहते हैं मुंबई फिनेंशियल सेक्टर का केंद्र है सो so, मुंबई के विविध सेक्टर्स का दिल्ली में प्रतिनिधित्व करना मैं मानता हूँ कि ये मेरा रोल मुख्य रोल रहेगा एंड uh, एक सांसद होने के नाते लोकसभा का सांसद या राज्यसभा का सांसद मैं मुंबई की हर एक आवाज को दिल्ली तक पहुंचाना चाहता हूं मुंबई में बहुत डाइवर्सिटी है पूरी देश की विविधता आपको यहां नजर आती है उस विविधता में एकता भी है एंड हर कम्युनिटी हर वर्ग के लोग यहां रहते हैं हर एक का सपना है कि मैं मुंबई में जब आता हूँ चाहे मैं रूरल महाराष्ट्र से हूँ या मैं यू नो रूरल उत्तर प्रदेश से हूँ Uh, हर एक का सपना है कि मुंबई इज द सिटी ऑफ ड्रीम्स एंड अलाउिंग पीपल टू अचीव दैट ऑब्जेक्टिव बीइंग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इन दिल्ली दीज आर थिंग्स व्हिच आई विल कंटिन्यू टू डू थ्रू थ्रू माय रोल एज अ शिवसेना एमपी इन पार्लियामेंट वेल लेट्स कम टू अनदर बर्निंग क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज द सीएए बैक इन 2021 व्हेन देयर वर एंटी हिंदू राइट्स इन बांग्लादेश यू हैड ट्वीटेड अबाउट हाउ बांग्लादेशी हिंदूस uh you know should be getting support and now since it has been implemented this year what do you have to say on this look firstly i think ca is a very misunderstood legislation in fact i think ca is one legislation which historically has political support from every political party it was something which our founding fathers then congress members spoke about when india got independence and when the constitution was formed it was an issue which dr manmohan singh as leader of opposition in the rajya sabha few maybe months or years before he became prime minister of india spoke about if circumstances force people these unfortunate people to seek refuge in our country our approach to granting citizenship to these unfortunate person should be both liberal unfortunately the narrative and i saw this when i was in the opposition at the time was used to spread fear among people especially among muslims that you will lose your citizenship 
today, five years or four years after CA has been implemented, there was a big issue. Some people were saying, "Hum kagaz nahi dikhayenge." Which Muslim has lost his or her citizenship in four years in India? Not one. Show me one. So, this was a canard spread to create fear among Muslims, and this has nothing to do with depriving any one of their citizenship. So, it's 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 a it's an issue which, as I said, actually cuts across party lines. It's an issue which the Congress supported, the the Prime Minister as leader of opposition supported. Congress founding fathers supported, the BJP has supported, other parties have supported. Show me an issue which has so much um, congruence and agreement and convergence on. But for political gains, people will use it to spread fear among communities. It's now the opposition. It's now the Congress who is saying that uh, this is coming as a vote bank politics for BJP. CAA is an opportunity to appease the voters for BJP. The first, the Congress view was Muslims beware, आप को यहाँ India से निकाला जाएगा. Then they realized after four years कि एक भी मुसलमान का नागरिकता नहीं ली गई है. So they cannot use that. Now they are saying it's appeasing Hindus. These are unfortunate uh, rhetorical political statements. which i believe the voters i really believe the voters will look beyond these things i think the voters ultimately look at issues in terms of how does it really percolate down to the ground has will is ca something which has broad political support historically regardless of what someone is saying now then yes it's a good thing do you have any words of wisdom for congress no i don't as i said i wish them my best uh, look all i'll say is congress has a great legacy it has a rich legacy a good example is 1991 desh ke purva pradhan mantri dr manmohan singh ji us samay bharat ke vitt mantri hua karte the us samay narsimha rao ji pradhan mantri hua karte the arthik sudhar narsimha rao ji ke netritva mein dr manmohan singh ne laya arthik sudhar ka sabse jyada fayda yadi kisi ko hua to aam bhartiya nagrik ko hua hai aaj hum sab ke paas ek mobile phone hai हर एक नागरिक के पास 3G है 4G है 5G है वो आर्थिक रिफॉर्म्स की वजह से हर एक के पास बीमा है इंश्योरेंस है दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स आई रिमेंबर इन 2016 ऑन द ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ ईयर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स आई वेंट टू द कांग्रेस एंड सेड वी शुड बी सेलिब्रेटिंग दैट लेगेसी एंड दैट आइडिया वॉज स्ट्रक डाउन सो इफ द पार्टी इज अशेम्ड ऑफ अ पावरफुल लेगेसी which has transformed india which in my opinion should have been celebrated then something is wrong in the way that party is thinking 30 years of economic reforms 2021 no mention no celebration so that's why i said the 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 party that talked about 370 being a temporary provision the party that brought economic reforms is now shying away from those issues it's unfortunate I, I've never seen any organization or any idea where you are actually discarding your legacy. So, keeping aside uh, for now all the burning questions, it's time to get up close and personal with Mr. Dera. Uh, when Mr. Dera is not a politician, uh, what does he like to do? I am not a politician most of the time. I am not a politician at home. Uh, I can't be a politician at home. Certainly, my um, the the check i have at my home is my 6 year old daughter um there's no way i can bring politics to her i love spending time i enjoy spending time with her um i enjoy spending time with my friends i have a so close set of friends who i have known from childhood i i always believe that people who have friends from childhood it tells you something about them uh, i am blessed to have that those relations over 40 years now so for me spending time getting to spend time with them once in a while for a dinner or lunch is a way is a good way to to beat stress i love music very much listening to music sometimes playing um these are things that help me uh, de stress i like i enjoy meditating when i have time so these are ways in which i relax i get my mind away from politics of course this is a busy time this is an election time so this is a time where you have less time for music for friends for family 
even for something like meditation unfortunately and for yourself but um, that's part and parcel of uh, politics and I'm, I'm used to that cycle now I've been doing it for 20 years so you know your body clock starts adjusting that you know this is a time where um, you have to take care of your health um, your mental health your physical health try not to fall ill you know and just work 15 and 16 hours a day so music has been your passion and going by your background you are a very talented musician so what really made you choose uh, politics as your career and not you know see being i never a wanted to be in politics as a child growing up to be honest with you i never liked politics as a child i saw it closely i thought it was taking away my father's time from being able to spend time with his family i saw his work schedule i i, I experienced that work schedule myself it's a very bad um, lifestyle choice um, it's very tough on a particular family um, so I, it was very clear I never wanted to get into politics in fact in school when my friends used to joke you know that time they used to uh, they, they used to say vote for Murli Devara because they would hear that in campaign things I would get very embarrassed and um, and I was very clear I would never ever enter politics my mother was very clear when I was entering politics that you know what this profession is about are you sure you want to do it my father in fact said that only if you really like serving, serving, then you can sustain in politics because it's not meant for everyone. So to me, my core value of politics, someone enters politics because of, you know, some, there's an identity issue. Someone else has another issue. For us, uh, for my family, it's always been a social service angle. It's always been NGO, uh, that kind of political angle. There are many others in Indian, like India, like for example, say a Priya has that uh, philosophy as well. Th those are the things I like about politics and that's how I entered politics. I came back to India, I got involved in a digital literacy program. We would go to schools in South Mumbai, which people from around the country think, you know, this is, uh, there was, there was Jaswan Singh ji who, uh, who used to, who's no more. He used to tell my father that you're the MP from Manhattan. They think South Mumbai means there's no problem in the constituency. And even in South Mumbai, we had schools which were government-aided schools where the schools didn't have money for blackboards, for chalk. Uh, but yet they wanted to teach the children of um, domestic staff, of taxi drivers. Uh, they wanted to teach those children and the parents wanted to learn IT. Uh, computers, that time computers meant of course or actual physical computer with a monitor and the CPU and the, the, the keyboard and the mouse and there was no money to even have a blackboard and I came back to India we brought private the private sector on board donated computers to them ran this in many schools we, teaching about a lakh students and um, that was my entry into politics going to these schools every week uh, meeting them meeting the parents meeting the children um, understanding that my father managed to use politics as an extension of social service despite whatever else politics also brings it also has baggage those were the things that motivated me then and those are the things that still motivate me today when are the times when you miss him the most i miss him all the time when i have to take a big political decision like i did which was the biggest political decision of my life uh, to leave the congress because i inherited the congress uh, it wasn't my choice. It's like, you know, you're born into a certain religion. You've inherited that religion. You, you're, you're, you're given a name. You inherit that name. You don't really have a choice. Of course, you can change your name. You can change your religion. Um, but that's how I was born into a Congress family. And to take that decision was a very difficult decision. I certainly had to draw on him. And what would he have thought? What would he have felt? Um, but, of course, one misses not just as a political, as, a, as someone who is wiser, more experienced and has your back but as a father you every every child will miss their parent every child values that so so my my granddaughter when she was born six years ago he he never met her um so we, we miss him there also so of course but but as a as someone who worked with him very closely um he had a very big impact on my politics and i still draw a lot of inspiration from him politically how has been your mother been a rock solid support through everything while he's not there? Very, as a very, very effective support. She's somebody who, you know, has seen politics very closely. So she has, in fact, she has more political wisdom than my father and I do. 
um, as does my wife in many ways because they are removed from it. Uh, they can see you know where it's good, where it's bad. And um, so she's been a massive pillar of strength. Uh, my wife has been a massive pillar of strength. My friends, my family all have been very, very supportive. So I'm very blessed to have that. And um, uh, these, these are, this is a core group that keeps me level-headed, keeps me sane uh, in a profession where often you start seeing people become arrogant, power goes to their head. Uh, these are people who I respect them because they don't care whether you're an MP not an MP, whether you are in party A, party B, whether you are in politics or not in politics. Um, and it is important to have that in, in anyone's life. Well, something I really want to mention is uh, Mrs. Hema Devra. She has she won the bronze uh, in Asian Games 2018. She is a bridge champion. Uh, at this age, at the age of 67, she started, she won the championship. Uh, have you learned bridge? From her, did no, you I'm happen not, to learn? No, I've not. I've not. I've never played. I, you know, I've never played a card game in my life. I don't know how to play any card game, and uh, so and bridge is, of course, the the mother of all card games. It's a very difficult game. It's similar to chess. It's not like teen patti or um, poker. Uh, it's a cerebral game. It's a game of the mind. For me, I've never got down to playing to learning bridge. My wife learnt bridge. Uh, my mother had suggested to her she should learn. She brought her friends together, learnt a bit. But you know, it's also a game which is famous globally because Bill Gates plays bridge. Warren Buffett, two of the richest people in the world play bridge. They are partners together in fact. Uh, but it's a game unfortunately which I see at some levels, I'm, I'm, I feel sad to see that nobody in my generation is playing bridge. But then there are some young people who every now and then you find out my mother made me meet a young boy who is I think the, 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 he's an Indian boy from Mumbai who is if I'm not mistaken the under 18 global champion and um, so very encouraging to see that. So I've never learned how to play bridge. I don't think I have the patience to learn how to play bridge. Yet I'm sure you're very proud of her because very she proud. has turned the tables, she has broken taboos uh, which was around women and playing card games. Yes, she's, she's a very passionate bridge player. She is very passionate about mentoring the next generation. She is um, passionate about taking the game forward, uh, trying to bring more people into the game, especially younger people. In fact, she used to, if she, not still, writes a column for midday, a bridge column. So, so she's fully bridge has been a very powerful tool for her. It's been a personal companion for her in many ways. And I, I remember during COVID, uh, she was playing more bridge than she was playing when COVID ended or before COVID started because she was playing online. I am very happy that you know she has bridge in her life and I am very proud of what she's achieved. She, yes, you are right, she received a, she won a, a medal for India in the Asian Games. We are very proud of that. And of course, her bridge and my father's bridge was very different bridge. His was more recreational bridge. It was more as a stress buster. Hers is more serious bridge. Uh, when she finishes playing the game, she's tired. Uh, it's strategy. She's, she, it's like you, you see a chess champion playing chess. That's the way she plays bridge. Um, your mother is a midday uh, columnist. So I'm sure you, an, you are an avid reader of midday as well. Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that. <laughs> I, I'm, I've always loved midday as a platform. I've always uh, found that this afternoon newspaper uh, this, this, this paper which doesn't come in the morning, which comes at a time when you have more time in the day and you have a little break. I've always enjoyed that. But I must be very frank with you, I've, I, I've stopped reading newspapers. And I know it's very unusual for a politician to say that. And I still get certain newspapers in my office and home. But I, I think during COVID, habits changed. With social media, with YouTube, there, there's been a move from print in for me at least and even from television even if there's a tv debate you watch that on your phone not on tv um, so so i'm glad you all are doing these digital things that's the future i believe here we begin with the rapid fire section and the first question goes like what do you think is the bigger problem for mumbai potholes or traffic honestly both and they're both related vada pav or pav bhaji pav bhaji a movie name for current Maharashtra politics. I saw the first part which is Dune. Just a 
vast open space. Uh, your first crush? A girl from my class. Uh, your nickname? MD. Who, according to you, is the best dressed politician? I would say a man who's, who's always looked, despite his grueling schedule, who looks like he's still fresh. And that's what dress to me means, is the Prime Minister. Okay. He's, um, uh, whether he wears a bandgala, whether he's wearing a Indian a bandi, um, whether he's flown from a trip to the US and attended a program immediately, I've seen that he, he doesn't look tired. He, his, his dress, his face, looks like his energy, his eyes are wide open. So, your favorite places to eat in Mumbai? Many. How can I name one? I mean, many okay. places. Just for us to try out maybe? To be very candid with you, you know, you said Pau Bhaji. There's mm. a place called Sardar Pau Bhaji yeah. in Tardeo. Uh, I've not gone there to eat in a long time, but sometimes ordering from there, picking up food from there. I, Mumbai is a, is a, you know, it's one of the best food uh, cities in the world, in my opinion. It's where you can really try, you may not have cuisines from around the world, but you really get so many foods from, uh, in Ind from India. You know, you get the best, I would say the best South Indian food um, that I've eaten. Uh, you, I, you, I, in my opinion, you get the best Gujarati food that I've eaten. You get the best, um, of course, you'll get the best Maharashtrian food. You get the best Parsi food. Very, very diverse. Your favorite holiday destination? Typically mountains, no one particular place. Typically mountains. I've I've been a sea person, mm -hmm. but now I think I've moved towards being a mountain the person. The ghats of Maharashtra, the mountains. Many any place, any place. The ghats of Maharashtra during the monsoon certainly. Uh, the Himalayas, um, many places in the Himalayas. I love traveling. I love to travel, even if it's on work. I I enjoy traveling. Uh, for me, traveling means even getting on a plane, meeting someone on the plane. Um, uh, the food you eat, the people you meet, even if you're at work, going for a walk in that city, um, exploring cultures, going to a local market. I love doing those things. So your last word to all your supporters and all the voters uh, for the upcoming elections. My last word to the voters of Mumbai would be, um, or even beyond Mumbai, uh, would be, you know, please look at your candidates very carefully. Please select good people who can represent you. Um, this is a very crucial time in India's history, in Mumbai's history. Uh, this is a time when India is at a cusp, at a tipping point of which direction the country should go in. We have very high tailwinds in a sense that the world wants to move away, divest from China. The world is looking towards India. It's for us as Indians not just the politicians, not just the bureaucrats, not just business leaders, but you and I, the voter, to make the most of that. And most importantly, to please go out and vote. Uh, there's no point, regardless of who you vote for, there's no point critiquing the government for five years, critiquing politicians for five years, and then saying, I'm not registered to vote. So things have become easier. The election commission, to their credit, have made the system of being able to vote much easier than it was 20 years ago when I entered politics. You had to do things manually. You can do things online now. And there's no excuse really why if you're above the age of 18, you won't go out and vote in the next two months. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Deva. You. It has been such an insightful uh, conversation. Thank it was so a much. pleasure to have me. you here. And uh, all you people out there, um, it's time that we exercise our right to vote. So please go out and vote uh, and stay tuned for more such insightful videos to Midday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.